Hey everybody, it's Will. Welcome to Editable Grids Part 3. So we saw already two videos. The first one was really about how to create an editable grid within the interface, focusing really on the mechanics of that editable grid. The second one was really how to use that and to tie it to an actual record type. So we used the employee record type to actually have a editable grid, which was recording the data to the database live, uh, which is you know a very interesting use case, and also lets you be able to actually um, you know delete uh, records directly within this editable grid. Well, today we're going to be seeing the kind of last use case for that, uh, which try to tries to tie everything back together, and we're going to be using editable grids, but in the context of an actual record action and an actual process model. So we're going to be sticking to our employees record type here. And this, as you can see here, is a demo. So this is the outcome that we want to actually achieve. So here in this record type, we can see that there is a couple of different employees, John Doe. We get the same fields as the other videos. So if you haven't seen them, I would you know, recommend that you go watch them. And so here, essentially, we have two actions. So what I did is just I just generated an action to have the new employee, which is just new employee singular. So I'm going to click here on new employee. And as you can see here, we have very basic fields that is automatically generated. What we want to sometimes do actually is to have potentially the creation of multiple employees in a batch, right? We don't want to create one employee and go again and go again. So maybe you want to do that in a batch. So this is where editable grids can come in and actually be helpful. So what we have here is to an action to add multiple employees. And as, a, as you can see, we're using pretty much the same exact editable grid that we had uh, in the previous videos here. And so I can, uh, of course, here add them. Uh, so we can add Jane Joe. Uh, and phone number doesn't really matter. We don't have any validations here. I'm able to actually remove them if I made, made a mistake, if I added too many uh, employees here, so I can remove them pretty easily. So this is pretty standard stuff, right? Uh, let me add another one. Bob something, another phone number. And here, if I submit them, if everything goes right, we have them added to the record time. So very useful, as you can see. And you can think of, because this is part of a process model, you can also think of this as part of a longer process model, which might require approval by a supervisor. Maybe not everyone can be, you know, you can't add all employees. So you might go to like an actual task, user input task. And this is where adding multiple employees is better because if you were to put this approval task as part of a single employee addition, then your manager or whomever is reviewing that would need to actually have multiple tasks, one per employee. So maybe that fits your use case, maybe not, but here we're gonna be seeing how to create that. So what we have here, we're gonna be adding, um, we're gonna go through all the steps to create uh, that form layout. We're not gonna create the form layout, I'm gonna show you how it was built. Uh, but then we're going to be tying this form layout into the process model uh, and then as a record action. So here we have the demo record type in this site. What we want to do is do the same thing in this to build. And this is the same data, but we have, we were missing the add multiple employees action here. Okay, so we're going to start off with looking at the interface. Then we're going to be creating the process model, connecting the interface to that process model. And then we're going to be assigning this process model as a record action so that it can show here on this uh, record type, okay? So you can use the timestamps below uh, to jump around. And if you need to pause to look at more of the expression, because we're gonna show some expressions, please do so, it's uh, all okay. So let me show you here this interface. Now, I've already created this interface because I don't wanna spend too much time on creating the interface given that it's very similar to what we saw in the previous videos. So if you're confused about some parts of it, uh, please go watch some, go rewatch the videos part one and part two. So here, let me actually kind of talk about what we have here. So this is a form layout, right? We get this whole form layout here and we get two buttons at the bottom. So there is a cancel and a submit. Now the important part here is that this cancel button assigns a value of true to this rule input cancel. And this lets the process model know that the you know, the, the, the action has been canceled. So we'll need to configure that in the process model, but that will happen when we create the process model. But the real start of the show here is the employees rule input, which we created. And this is a list of record type employee. And how do I know this is a list? It has an array here. So just to create it very simple, I just added the name, 
looked for the type and then ticked the array option here, right? So very, very simple. Click okay here, doesn't change anything. That's okay, I'm not gonna edit it anyway, so it's fine. So let me kind of talk a bit about how the grid layout works. So we get, first of all, the header cells. So the header cells is the list of the headers in the top cells here. So we get five, first name, last name, email, phone number, and one last one for the remove uh, button or icon that you have uh, to remove the row. We have some column configs. This is just for the sake of, uh, I'm actually gonna expand this if you want to pause and read it. The column configs here, we have some configuration around the width. So they are just here as placeholders. And we're just saying here that we want to have the last width of the column config as width icon. So it's just very small. So if I add a new employee here, you'll see that it's small. It's not, doesn't take the same size as the others. We also have an add row link here. So very similar to the one in the previous um, video. Here we have, we're adding, every time we click on this new employee, we're adding a new empty employee record type, data type, into the RI Bang employee. So that's what's happening here. And the last but not least is the rows. So here we are iterating, oops, iterating through RI Bang employees. So we're doing as many rows as we have employees. So here we have one item in our employees real inputs. So we're gonna have one row. And then we actually display all of the different components, so text field for first name, last name, email, phone number, and then the last button, which is to remove uh, the elements into the RBANG employees. Same logic as the previous video, so I'm not gonna spend too much time here. This is where you could be putting some validations if you want to make sure that the first name is required. You could put in some required um, keywords here. That's more of like the details, uh, which is important, don't get me wrong, but here we want to focus on how does this tie into the rest of the um, whole logic of the application, okay? So this is the interface. I'm gonna leave it as it is. Um, and I can just expand this if you want to take a look at it. Uh, very standard stuff here. So it shouldn't be too much of a surprise. Um, and again, use inspiration from the first uh, videos if needed. Cool, so now I'm gonna come back to the actual creation of a process model. So I'm gonna say new process model here. And we're gonna call this uh, add multiple employees. So process to add employees in a batch. I'm gonna create this. I'm gonna use the default security here. And as a good reflex, what I wanna do is actually define the data management and the alerts. So I'm gonna go into the properties here. I'm gonna say I'm gonna delete the processes three days after completion or cancellation and then the alerts is gonna be send alerts to the following users or groups, which will be the administrators of the application. So now what we're gonna be doing is actually um, using the form layout that we just have, so the interface, which is called the add multiple employees, and it's too zoomed in here, but we're gonna use this interface uh, as the form layout, the, the start form, sorry, of this process. So I'm gonna go to the properties here, and I'm gonna to go to process start form, and I'm gonna look for e.g. add multiple employees. And here it tells me, hey, do you want to automatically create process parameters to match your interface's inputs? Process parameters, they are process variables that you can pass into the process before it even starts. So that's exactly what we want to have because when, you, when the user sees the interface, when they add the users, the process is not even started. So that's actually what we want to have. We want to pass on those, those employees to the parameters. I'm gonna say yes. Uh, and if we are okay, sometimes you just need to give it a bit of a refresh here. So employees, click okay. Let me go back into the variables. So here it seems like we're just missing the cancel. That's okay, we can add it here. So if if for some reason your um, your process variable have not been created. So here we have employees, but here we don't have a cancel, which we need. So what I can do is actually click the plus button here and I don't need to do anything else. It tells me, hey, it's already there, cancel. I'm gonna click okay and it's mapped already. Okay, so that's that's what we need to have. We have employees, cancel, and we see that it is a multiple employees here, which is exactly what we want because uh, we don't want to do one employee per employee, we want to do multiple employees. So I'm gonna click okay here, give it a save, always good to save. 
Uh, and then we're gonna be actually adding the right records smart service, which I'm gonna drag and drop here. So we're gonna call this right employees. And the beauty of this uh, smart service now is that you're able to actually go into the setup of it and directly select employees. And that's exactly what you need to have. Nothing else, you just are writing employees into the records. Very simple to set up here. You could do some dynamic stuff here by going into the expression mode, uh, generating the employees on the fly. Not necessary here, so we're gonna st stop there for this setup here. Now, one thing we do need to have is the cancel path. So what happens if you if the user clicks cancel, then what they would need to have is actually have a path that goes into the end node directly. So we're gonna do that. I'm gonna look for the XOR gateway. Drag and drop this here. So I'm gonna start here with the cancel here, rename the cancel, and then by holding the shift key, I'm gonna draw the process here path up to the end node. And then I just need to actually configure the decision of the cancel so that when PVBank cancel is true, then it goes to the end. If not, it goes to the right record smart service. So I can go into uh, adding a new condition here, adding into going into the expression mode. Oops. PVBank cancel. Saving close. If cancel is true, then it goes to the end node. If not, it goes to the right employees. So click OK, give it a save, always good to save. And the last thing that I wanna do is just to have everything chained together so that when I click on the button, it's gonna do the process. So when I submit the form, the process is gonna run and then I'm gonna see the results directly into, into the the, the actual record list. So that's a good thing to have. So I'm gonna right click on here, enable activity chaining. Same thing here, right click on here, enable activity chaining. That's exactly what we need to have. We're gonna do a save and publish. So uh, control alt S or here you can do it, save and publish here. And uh, we can ignore for now the this uh, hint here. It says that process display name is not dynamic. It's not ideal, but just for the sake of time, we're gonna skip over this one. So my process here is done, right? What I wanna do now is to tie this to the actual record action, the employee record action. So I'm gonna go into my employee record type here, and I've got the actions here, and I'm gonna configure a record list action. How do I know it's not a related action? It's because there's no context for this, right? The related action is always in the context of a specific record. Here it is in no context whatsoever. So we want to actually configure a record list action and we're gonna do that manually. So we're not gonna generate it here. We're gonna be adding the process model manually here. So I'm gonna click on configure new action manually and let's call it here add multiple employees. The key can be that, that's okay. Uh, icon can stay the same, we can make it medium size, and then I'm gonna call this, so the EG add multiple employees process model. Click OK. I'm gonna save the changes. So now we have our action created in this record type here, and I've saved it. So now if I go into my site, so here we, have, we had our demo, which I showed you, and now our to build, so Believe me, this is two different record types here. And this is the one that we just had our multiple employees here. So we're gonna add multiple employees. Gonna try this out. Uh, let's add ooh, who, Robert, Mouni, rdd at mail.com. There we go. Click on submit. And now Robert is added and I can take a look at the actual processes that have been run to see if that worked. And yes, our EG add multiple employees has worked out. It was just done right now, so it works. So there you go. This ties up the whole use, potential use of editable grids. Um, you could go further into uh, using editable grids to actually maintain a list of reference data. Uh, but I think this shows you a potential common use case where you want to submit multiple cases or requests uh, and have, you know, in the same batch, 
some reviews by a supervisor or someone else. Uh, so this is really kind of beautiful because you can trigger processes in a batch and we'll just have one process handle a batch of items, records, uh, and treat them in one flow so you don't have to have one review per employee per something. So just a bit of an easier one to, to use. So have a go at trying this out. Uh, if a couple of things were unclear, you've got the videos one and two. Uh, and good luck with trying this. I hope this video brought you value. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.